guys and welcome back to my channel. So today I'm filming another um hold on let me get, get filming another coffee drinking and Bible reading video. I haven't even uploaded the first one yet, so we'll see how this series does. <gasps> but this morning when I woke up I was like, oh you know, I have a day off, it's time to relax, chill, and I thought what better way to start out this day by filming another one of these videos because I had so much fun filming the first one and I think I'm a little bit better prepared this time because I know what to expect so let's just kick off this video and start so today for my coffee drinking Bible reading I decided to um, read and like talk about my favorite Bible story and when I tell you what it is you're gonna be like what <laughs> because my favorite Bible story is 2 Samuel 11 and I feel like a like a pastor or something if you have your Bible please turn to it. <laughs> no but if you have your Bible and you want to look and read with me when you look at 2 Samuel 11, if you have the little thing in your Bible that like tells you what the story is, you, you'll notice that it says David and Bathsheba. <laughs> and if you've never heard of this story before and you're like, I don't get why this is funny to have this as a favorite Bible story, you'll understand in a second. And bef you know, after I read the story, I'll explain why it's my favorite Bible story. But... One of the reasons it is, is because I, when I was younger, we had a bunch of, you know, like those little kid Bible story books, and I read about David all the time, because there's David and Goliath, and like, another classic is um, David and Jonathan, like, Best Friends Forever, the epitome of BFFs, like, that's like the poster Bible story for that, but this was the first time I read a story in the in the Bible that I had never really heard of before like it hadn't been in any of my Bible story books because at the time like I felt every Bible story I heard about in Sunday school or like was in my Bible story books that I read in the Bible like I thought I oh, for some reason I had read them all you know they kind of got old so this was the first time I'd read a Bible story that wasn't that I had never heard before and I was like wow like, this is interesting. Scandalous. So, I'll read it. In, I don't know if I should read it because there's 27 verses. But I will read the first part because that's important. And, and it, I'm reading from the ESV. And you can read from whatever version you want. But mine says, In the spring of the year, the time when kings go out to battle, David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel. And they ravaged the Ammonites and besieged Rabbah. But David remained at Jerusalem. And that first verse is really important because in the beginning of the verse it says it's the time of year when kings go out to battle. But David sent out everybody and he stayed behind. Which should already be like a warning sign because... That's the time of year when all kings go out to battle, yet you have the king of Israel who stayed behind in Jerusalem, and that's already questionable. So, I'll just summarize the rest of the story, but I wanted to read that part because it's very important, and I might come back and reference a couple verses. But he went out onto the roof of his palace, I believe it was, yeah, on the roof of his house, the king's house, and he saw this woman bathing, and it was Bathsheba, and he saw her bathing and was like, ooh, who'd that be? Like, you know, that's a beautiful woman. And they told him it was the wife of Uriah the Hittite, but, Hittite? I think that's how you pronounce him? But, anyways, he knew that she was married, and he still, like, summoned her, and, like, he laid with her, and she became pregnant. So then at that point, he's like, oof, you know, like, we need to fix this. So 
her husband was away at battle fighting like he was supposed to, and David wasn't. He was already committing sin because he should have been there in, at war. But, so, he brought Uriah the Hittite back and he, like, tried to get him drunk and stuff, and he tried to have him go back to his house to live with his wife in hopes that, you know, when she found out, like, when she told him she, she was pregnant, he'd think it was his kid. But that didn't happen. He was noble and did what he was supposed to do and said, you know, I can't go back and sleep with my wife when all of my comrades are still at war and, you know, at camp, you know. So he didn't do it. And so basically David had him killed when he went back to, when he went back to the camp and they, on the, at their next battle, he had him in the front lines where only like the mightiest of men go and Uri wasn't that and he got killed instantly. And after the period of mourning, David um, d married Bathsheba. So the end of chapter 11 of Second Samuel, you know, Uriah has just died and David had married Bathsheba after her period of mourning and the last verse, verse 27, the tail end. So it says, And then when the mourning was over, David sent and brought her to his house and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done had displeased the Lord. So he was not happy. God was not happy with David. And when you go into chapter 12, the... Um, he sends Nathan, who was a prophet, to David, and he uses this, I don't know if the best way to describe it was a metaphor, like an analogy, and he told David this story about this rich man who had all this sheep, these sheep, you know, and he could have, you know, anything, all the sheep he wanted. And there was this, his neighbor, this poor man, only had one sheep, and it was, like, perfect, and he treated that sheep, like, a child almost like it ate at his table and blah, blah blah and when the rich neighbor had friends over he wanted the the poor neighbor's sheep and he took it and killed it like he took the one thing that guy had when he had his pick of the litter you know and so he was like you know this man should be killed for his wrongdoings and he said well that man is you and he kind of realized like Oh, what have I done? And, you know, he had to repent and, you know, ask for God's forgiveness, which he did. And in the end, the child that Bathsheba and, had con and David had conceived died. And he and God had told him that in the beginning. And, she, and after that, David and Bathsheba had Solomon, who became the next king of Israel. So, the reason this is my favorite Bible story, I already told you before one of the reasons, but the second reason was because, like I said earlier, all the Bible stories I read about David were, you know, how, you know, David killed Goliath, and David and his best friend Jonathan, like, all, you know, so when I was younger, I had not thought that he was perfect, I knew he wasn't, but I thought, you know, like, there, I had never heard a story about him, like, having to ask for forgiveness and, you know, doing something sinful. And that was the first time I had ever read it. And I was like, whoa, like, it hit me. And I, and one of the most, one of my favorite parts of the story is when David realizes that what he had done and he can't reverse his actions like he can't raise a person back from the dead and when and I feel like that's important lesson to learn the act of asking for forgiveness is not easy and it's really important that you know how to do it it's forgiveness is really important and 
having to ask it is not fun at all. <laughs> it's one of the hardest things I personally have ever had to do. I always, I always hated asking for forgiveness and admitting that I was wrong because I don't know. It's just hard, you know, like because it's hard to admit like defeat and you have to admit like I did something and I need to apologize for my behavior and ask that you forgive me. It's not easy. <laughs> and I always love reading the story because it's a nice reminder of how of forgiveness and God's love for us. So I didn't really drink any of my coffee. I think I did that last time. So I'm going to take a sip now. <laughs> but anyways, that completes this tea drinking and Bible reading. And I hope you guys enjoyed it. Let me know if you want to see more of these. I don't know if you like the last one or not, so we'll see how this one goes too. <laughs> and don't forget to like this video and give it a thumbs up if you liked it. And be sure to comment down below. And comment down below your favorite Bible story. I'd be interested in knowing what yours are. I don't want to say like if they're generic or if they're like weird like mine. <laughs> but... Um, and comment down below if you have any ideas for any other future, you know, tea, coffee drinking. I almost said tea drinking. Wow. Thank you, Rachel. <laughs> but comment down below if you're interested in seeing more of these. And, you know, maybe give me some ideas if you want to see me talk about any of them. And be sure to subscribe before you leave for more videos. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.